In today's lesson, lesson number one, we're going to talk a little bit about what is digital planning and also why I think it is so great for so many people. Hi friends, it's Mary and I want to welcome you to my Getting Started with Digital Planning course. I know that when I first got started with digital planning, I had just seen a small glimpse of what was available in the digital planning world and I had such a challenging time figuring out what tools I needed and what was actually possible with the devices I had and what I could do to start digital planning in my life. It even took me years to actually figure out what was needed to give a try at digital planning and I don't want that for you. I don't want you to have to go searching around the internet looking for resources. I want you to have one place that you can go and get a quick overview of everything that you need if you want to try digital planning in your life. This course is going to be a five part course. So come back every day this week here to my YouTube channel and be sure to check out the next part of this course. And at the end of the course, I'm going to do a Q and A covering all the questions that I got during this course. So if you have any questions throughout any part of this course, be sure to leave it in the comments below and I will do my best to cover them in the Q and A at the end of this course. In today's lesson, we're going to be covering what exactly is digital planning and why I think it can be so great for you if that's something that interests you in your life. Let's get started. What is digital planning? That is a very big question. To me, just as in the paper world, paper planning can cover a wide variety of planning styles, including Filofax and bullet journals and Erin Condren planners and happy planners. Just the same, digital planning covers a wide variety of planning styles, including Google Calendar, OneNote, Evernote, and what we'll be covering in this course, GoodNotes. Boy, that's a lot of notes. In this course, we're going to be covering how to digitally plan with GoodNotes. GoodNotes is a PDF annotator program that works really well, especially on the iPad Pro. You can also use it with your iPhone, or your MacBook, and you can use it on other iPads as well. I'm going to be covering GoodNotes in this course because I think it best mimics a paper planning system, which I know when I was really looking into digital planning, that was what I was looking for first and foremost. And so this is very similar to if you had a paper planner in front of you, only you're doing it all digitally and you're having all the advantages of digital planning with that as well. If you do have any questions about digital planning in other systems, or if you are interested in a course in digital planning with one of those other systems, please be sure to let me know in the comments below. And that's something that I may be able to do in the future. I, ha I do have experience planning in all of those other digital systems and I'm not afraid to try a new system. So if that is something you are interested in, let me know in the comments below and that may be a topic for a future video. Now, why is digital planning so great? There are so many advantages to digital planning and honestly there's probably so many that I won't even be able to cover them all in this video. However, here are some of my favorite reasons that I love digital planning. Your planner is with you wherever you go. If you use a smartphone at all, chances are you're going to have that smartphone somewhere nearby you throughout your day. For me, I have my phone with me pretty much 24 seven. I'm not always on it. It's not always visible, but I have it somewhere nearby because I want to be available. If anyone has an emergency call in my family, I want to be able to quickly grab my camera to capture those special moments within our family. And really there are so many useful tools that it is just something that I use on a regular basis. Since my planner is digital, it syncs not only with my iPad where I do the majority of my planning, it also syncs with my phone, which I always have with me. So even though it may be a little more challenging to add or change things from my phone, I still have the plans that I made in the first place. When I was doing paper planning, that was one of my biggest challenges. I did not have my planner with me at all times, especially once I started working from home. I just didn't carry my planner with me to every room that I had. Most of the time I had it stuck away on a desk because I didn't want it in the middle of my house where I was trying to keep things neat and tidy. This made paper planning so much more challenging than when I worked a desk job where I had my planner open for at least eight hours a day in front of me. I couldn't easily refer to things and look back and look forward. Also, I didn't love carrying my big paper planner around everywhere. I know there are some beautiful small planners, but they never felt like they had enough room for me to write in 
and so I didn't want to haul my bigger planner around in my purse all the time, especially once I became a mom and started carrying around all the mom things. I didn't need one other heavy thing to carry with me. Digital planning gave me an option to just have a small device that I was going to have with me, whether I had a paper planner or not, and always have my plans with me at a moment's glance. Another side advantage to always having it with you is that you always have your older versions with you as well. I have been using Google Calendar on and off, mostly on, since 2008. That's 10 years from when I'm recording this video. I have a chance to look back and look at everything that I've recorded in Google Calendar there. And once I started planning in GoodNotes as well, I also have those older planners within GoodNotes that I can look back on and even search upon to see when things happened in the past. While I did keep all of my old paper planners, the accessibility and the search option is just something that is not there with paper planning, unfortunately. Another benefit of digital planning is easy mistake removal. Now, I always got new calendar jitters whenever I got a new planner or a new calendar. I loved personalizing it and making it my own, but I was always cringing that, oh, this plan was going to change, or, oh man, I was going to make a mistake on this page and it was just going to make my beautiful calendar so ugly. One of the best things about the digital world is there's this little undo button. So when I make mistakes, and my goodness, I make a lot of them, I can just easily undo. And when my plans change, I can lasso and move them or I can erase and rewrite them somewhere else. And my planner looks just as beautiful as always. It doesn't have those erase marks if I used pencil. It doesn't have the whiteout if I used pen and it doesn't have just the ugly blemishes if I just completely screwed up a page. One final advantage of digital planning is if you already have the tools, digital planning can be quite inexpensive. So there are some amazing digital planners out there that are really reasonable in price compared to some of the paper systems. Now, this will all depend on what you consider reasonably priced, but just so you know that there are planners out there that are free, provided by people on the internet that you can find to try and use completely for free. Actually, the wonderful lady, Brooke, that provided the planner I will be using in this course does have a free version that you can use to try out digital planning and see if it works for you. As we get into the course, I will give you more information on how you can get that free planner. I will also leave it in the comments below. And there are more expensive planners that offer many more features and things like that that rival the cost of an Erin Condren or something like that. To me, what I get for a digital planner, even one that I pay for, is much more than what I would get for a paper planner at the same price. There are so many advantages to digital planning that this just scratches the surface, but hopefully this gives you an idea of why I'm doing this course and why I feel like digital planning might be a great choice for you in your planning style. In our next lesson, we are going to be covering the tools that you will use in this course and some options that you can use if you don't have those tools available to give digital planning a try and see if it's good for you. I hope that you'll join me for our next lesson. And if you are interested in it, please be sure to hit the subscribe button below so that you will get notified when the next lesson is released. If you are loving this course so far, please be sure to share with a friend so that others can take part of this awesome course while it is free here on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a blessed day. Bye-bye.